welcome back to the Coleman channel and welcome back to another installment of Collection, Color Collection, 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 yeah. The series where we look at fucking a bunch of shit that I own that is kind of related to the disciplines of creative media, whether it's music or shows or books or games or f films or anything related to that kind of thing. Um... So yeah, we've already, I've already shown you a couple of the comics I own, I've already shown you a couple of the uh, video game paraphernalia that I own. Uh, I wanted to show you some music that I own. Yeah, I enjoy music quite a lot, a lot, a lot. I, uh, yeah, music's just fucking kind of lit. Music's probably one of my favourite uh, facets of creative media. I don't know, I can't, I'm not, I can't do music. I can play a ukulele a little bit. But yeah, other than that, um, yeah, I can't, I can't play music or anything like that. But uh, you know, I thoroughly enjoy music. I listen to music all the time when I'm working or doing things in general that involve me sitting here and working on things, baby. Like music's one of my driving forces in my life, and as a result, I happen to collect vinyl records. I've been collecting vinyl records for many years. I think I started collecting vinyl maybe 2016, so like seven years ago I started collecting vinyl music type beat, you know? Um, so yeah, why not just show you some of the vinyl records I own in my collection and some of the other little random goodies because I've got, like, you know, there's some CDs and even cassettes as well because my record player can play all the things. It's really nice. So yeah, I've got a big old box. Oh, Jesus fucking hell. I've got a big old fucking crate of uh, vinyl records in here. This box is actually getting too small. There's actually a lot of records in my room that are not in here because they don't fit no more. But yeah, I'm just gonna dig out a few and uh, I'll just tell you about some of the more interesting ones and may give you a bit of an insight in terms of the type of music I like, because I'm very much all over the place with my musical taste. Very much all over the place with my musical taste. Anyway, without further ado, let's open the chest. Okay, let's take out an interesting one. How about one that isn't even like music in a traditional sense at all? How about this motherfucking licky city fucking epic fucking thing right here? I can't even speak or use my words or enunciate properly because this album is fucking lit. Yeah, can you tell who that is? It's a big scary Jason Voorhees mask. This, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, this is the soundtrack for Friday the 14th, specifically Friday the 14th part four, the final chapter. Isn't that just the most randomly specific thing ever? Yes, Friday the 14th, the final chapter, uh, composed by Harry Manfredini, the fucking legend himself. Harry Manfredini, who did the soundtrack for the original Friday the 14th as well. I don't know if he did any of the other ones. Uh, maybe the first few, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, he's like the one he made the, you know, ch -ch 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 -ah 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 -ah, you know, the, all that kind of stuff, the classic. Dee -dee 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 -dee. That was the big violins and all that kind of stuff. That was the Harry Manfredini sound. And it's very much apparent in this album here for part four, the final chapter. Uh, this is a vinyl record that was printed by some very epic dudes. I don't know if you can see that down there, but that is Waxwork Records. Waxwork Records are fucking epic. They reissue um, their very own custom, you know, pr vinyl pressings and album covers and stuff for horror soundtracks, some film soundtracks, but mostly horror. Um, and Friday the 14th is one of them, including like Halloween and. Uh, you know, about like Chud, I think Chud is one of them. Some really fucking random ass classics out there. I think they did the album soundtrack now for White Zombie, the Bela Lugosi um, 1930s black and white horror that was like one of the first films that had zombies, but it's not like undead zombies or hypnotized people. Anyway, I digress. This is an album and I'm a massive Friday fan. It's my favorite slasher series of all time, one of my favorite horror franchises of all time. And they were selling this baby. Part 4 is my favourite of the films. So I thought, fuck it, I need to get this. I got it a couple of years ago now, probably 2017 maybe. Um, and yeah, this thing is just fucking fire. Uh, like they got a custom shiny, glossy Jason mask there. 
and on the back of the album you've got Jason standing there with his lovely little axe wound there uh, standing in the dark and you've got all the songs there it's obviously just soundtrack so it's, it's mostly ambient music but you know it's really fucking cool it's a little bit of history it's Friday the 14th it's Harry Manfredini at his finest and if you're a big fan of spooky crazy violin music and kind of eerie kind of you know that kind of eerie music that Friday the 14th is kind of famous for I feel it just kind of fits perfectly fits the theming and the setting and Jason himself then look no further this is a gatefold album so it's got some fucking phenomenal art on the inside I like this album a lot <laughs> yeah there's all the characters that we all know and love they get murdered immediately in part four, you've got, um, there he is, ah, oh, fuck, what's his name again? Corey Feldman, you got Corey Feldman right there, um, just before he murders, there's his mummy, uh, above her. Where's Crispin Glover? I don't know which one Crispin Glover's supposed to be, I guess he's the one there. He has one of the, oh, fuck, I guess he's the one there. He has one of the most iconic deaths in the film, he goes, where's the corkscrew? And then he gets a corkscrew, his corkscrew ran through his head. It's a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal film. And my favourite Friday film, but it doesn't end there because the one of the things that Waxwork do that's epic is the vinyl itself has always got a crazy custom design on it and they usually give you an option of two different designs. I don't think you can get this album anymore, they're usually very limited release. They may have re-released it recently, I don't know, but when this came out it's very limited quantities and uh, yeah, it's probably gone now as it is with most of the Friday albums that they do. But there was two options. One of them was called um, Tommy. I can't remember the guy's film name. It's Corey Feldman in the film. He appears in like two other films after it. But um, it was a t design called Tommy. And it was just like a opaque blue and white album. Because Tommy always wore blue in the films. I didn't like that very much. I didn't think it suited Friday. So the other design was called Crystal Lake. And I think it suits much better. So... Uh, yeah, there's the vinyl itself in its sleeve. There it is, you know, some of the songs on it. Like What Boy Ma'am, the opening sequence music and shit. And Jason's on the B side as well. But yeah, uh, Crystal Lake is a fucking beautiful, transparent, murky, blue coloured vinyl. It looks fucking fire. It is see through. It's kind of hard to see in the camera, but it is see through. Uh, I promise you can't. I can't really prove it to you, but it is. And it does get. It gets even fucking better than that. I'm already nine minutes in this video. I've not finished talking about this fucking album yet. Uh, it gets even better than that because the second vinyl, the C side and the D side, which also has Jason there in our pose, um, it's the same thing, same murky color, see through color, transparent color, but it's a dirty fucking green. Isn't that just? fucking rad. I don't have any, you can kind of see it there, kind of, kind of, it's kind of see through, you can kind of see the microphone through it a little bit, but yeah, that's just fucking fire. The entire D side is dedicated to one song, La Muerte de Jason, uh, which is the song that plays at the end of the film. It plays, basically plays all the music in order of the film, but yeah, I'm going to stop droning on about it. If you, if you love horror, you love horror soundtracks and you love vinyl, fucking check out Waxwork Records, I emphasize, they are fucking amazing top quality shit like this is all original stuff this is their own pressing of this soundtrack their own art and all that it is just fucking glorious stuff friday the 14th the final chapter part four on vinyl fire here's one i picked up not too long ago it's just literally all silver you may or may not know what this is if you've seen it just because of the silver i'll show you the cover it's kind of hard to see in that light. Oh, you can fucking see that, motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the re-release, the I think the deluxe re-release of MF Motherfucking Doom, all caps when you spell their name. God rest in fucking peace, my boy. MF Doom, the illest villain with his debut album, Operation Doomsday. Operation Doomsday. Uh, yeah, the debut album of MF Doom. This is not the original cover. This is a re-release. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the old cover. Uh, but, you know, MF Doom vinyl is pretty hard to find here in Scotland of like HMV or whatever, which is like the album, the music shop over here. Uh, but yeah, I can't find it very well and because it just it sells out it sells out rapid online now. But yeah, I'm a much bigger fan of the original album art of Operation Doomsday, not even like the 
second version, but like the original, original, original re release of Operation Doomsday. But yeah, MF Doom, if you don't know him, he's your favourite rapper's favourite rapper. He's just one of the greatest rappers of all time. He's just got fucking insane flow. He's just got insane lyricism. His samples are fucking fantastic. They're all from like cartoons and they're just the fucking sickest beats of all time. And he's just fucking one of the most talented rappers of all fucking time. He sadly passed away. I think 2021, I fucking cried and drank alcohol uh, when that happened. But yeah, MF Doom is probably like my favourite rap artist of all time. I do like rap and R&B and that kind of stuff. I'm very picky, but MF Doom is my favourite. I've loved him for many years without knowing it actually because he had a song, long story short, he had a song in Saints Row the Third. It was a radio station called WDDD CPDG Adult Swim, which played music from Adult Swim, like Aqua Teen Hunger Force and stuff. And MF Doom did an album with a guy called Danger Mouse. It was called Danger Doom. Um, the Mouse and the Mask, and it was a song from that album called Basket Case, which was sampling from Harvey Birdman, Attorney of Law, and I loved that song, I had no idea this was the guy, and then I found him years later, and I fell in love with him, and I've listened to like all his fucking discography, and this is the only MF Doom album I own, sadly. But yeah, like I said, it's just all silver, it's pretty cool, um, but it's not my favourite, but yeah, like I said, am I taking like two albums out, vinyls out here? Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, Operation Dooms, like I say, from Metal Face Records, of course. Um, I don't know exactly what is more special about this one, to be honest, apart from the the original release. But, you know, if you've not listened to MF Doom and you love, like, you know, rap and shit, you kind of need to listen to MF Doom. He's just the kind of one, to be honest. If you want to start off, there's a lot of out songs, there's a lot of tracks from this album I recommend. Uh, there's also some skits like back in the days and stuff. Go with the Flow's a banger, Red and Gold is a banger. Doomsday of course, come on now. Rhymes Like Dimes featuring Cucumber Slice. He's also really well known for like all these features he has in the album, like people that no one fucking knows apart. He's just like these tight dudes that, and also people that he just seems to have made up, like King Ghidra and all that kind of stuff as well, like Godzilla references and his stuff and Marvel stuff obviously as well. Yeah, listen to this one. Who You Think I Am, Banger, featuring King Caesar, Rodan, Megalon, Kamakurus, and Kong. They're literally all kaiju from the fucking Godzilla series. It's very strange. Oh yeah, hey, good banger. Samples from Scooby-Doo. Gas Draws is a banger. Question Mark's also a banger. Just listen to fucking Operation Doomsday, bruh. It's a fucking litty sicky vinyl album. Uh, and it's the debut album of the man himself. You know, some people kind of prefer his more more polished stuff because a lot of his stuff's like quite lo-fi and all that kind of shit. I prefer his lo-fi stuff like King Ghidra and Operation Doomsday and stuff, to be honest. This is not my favourite MF Doom album, I don't think. I'm much more a bigger fan of King Ghidra. It's like another name that he used before. I don't have that album, sadly. But this is one that I have. Operation Doomsday. Listen to it. Here's a really cool one. Uh, this guy's kind of like just broken out a couple of years ago. Um, and this album's like really, really fucking good. It's called Slide. It's by a guy called George Clanton. He signed on with 100% Electronica. Yeah, he's up there kind of known for like a lot of like, um, I guess alt music. They do a lot of vaporwave and synthwave kind of stuff like that, kind of interesting micro genre kind of thing. And George Clanton definitely is a master of like vaporwave sounds and stuff because if you don't know what vaporwave is, it's kind of like. A, a micro genre they call it. I don't fucking care. It's one of my favorite genres of music where it's like I love sampling and lo-fi um, production value where it takes like a lot. It's like built on like nostalgic elements. Like it takes like a lot of 80s and 90s aesthetics. You know, uh, basically what this Coleman, the Coleman channels kind of takes a lot of inspiration from that kind of stuff. Like the open music's vaporwave and stuff. Um, that kind of sound. But George Clanton is insane because he doesn't like sample anything he just like is, takes the sound and the aesthetic and the vibe of vaporwave and the production of it and makes entirely original beats um and he sings over it and it's just a fucking fantastic album it's a fucking brilliant album if you're interested in that kind of thing i think you should listen to a lot of the stuff in side a is really really good like living loose make it forever tie me down dumb pretty much the entire of the a side it fucking slaps um he's really really good if you're familiar with Matt Watson from Super Mega, Matt Watson from Super Mega, uh, he's good friends with George Clanton. He does a lot of stuff with 100% Electronica. It's a really, really cool album. And I got this one 
I think I actually heard of it from Anthony Fantano um, and it's like the first time where I heard an artist he was talking about and I went to listen to him because I saw the album cover and I went that's interesting and he did an interview with him and it was called the David Bowie of Vaporwave and went excuse listen to it fire um, but this is a really cool album as well uh, I can't remember when I got this one must have been like 2018 2017 um, and this is when the album I think just about came out so it's like a special edition because the vinyl itself is fucking fire it's an opaque tie-dye black and blue little number and it is fucking hot dude it is fucking fire it perfectly matches the aesthetic of the album cover uh yes oh god i've not listened i'm not buying this one out for a while but man is it fucking fire slide by george clanton please give it a go if you're interested in like vaporwave and i guess if you're able to get into it as well kind of synthy kind of lo-fi kind of beats and stuff George Clanton kind of is fire. Uh, please check it out if uh, that entices you. Slide. Slide. This one's quite interesting. Um, I don't know if you'll know who... Well, some people might know who this is. I don't know. This is not my favourite album of his. I've got the other album. I've got two albums of this artist and the other one's in the room because I was actually listening to it on vinyl. This is a very simple cover. Uh, this is an album called Love Is Real. It's by a guy called John Mouse or John Mouse or whatever. <laughs> If you don't know who this guy is, you may be more familiar with Ariel Pink or Ariel Pink. I've not listened to Ariel Pink. All I know is he's kind of controversial now because he's like a big right wing motherfucker. He was there at the January 6th riots, I think. I think John was too. I don't know what he was doing. Don't quote me on that. I just like his music. Opinions, opinions, opinions. Anyway, Ariel Pink. Um, I don't know. He's a big righty kind of guy. I don't really care. Um, I've not listened to his music, but he's really good chums with John. Um, and I guess they kind of have a similar aesthetic going on. But Love Is Real is a very fascinating album. It's released by a label called um, Upset The Rhythm. Rhythm? This is a cover art made by a guy called George E. Barr. I don't really know anything about it, but it's a very simplistic cover. It's kind of beautiful in a way. It's a little robot making music. Like, you know, while robots making art. What the fuck? AI. But yeah, this is a very interesting album because I think this is like the one he was just coming up. A lot of his albums when John was coming up were kind of blambasted and not liked until he came out with his, I think his most prolific and well-known album, We Must Become the Pitiless Censors of Ourselves. That's the one that's through there. But, you know, I love a lot of the, al lot of the music on this. It's got a lot of really beautiful, I don't know what the fuck you call it. I guess it's like a new wavy synth pop kind of thing a lot of people compare it to like 80s new wave stuff but john isn't inspired by that at all apparently he takes a lot of like actual classical compositions and stuff he's a philosopher um i can't remember what his philosophy discipline is but he is a philosopher so he's pretty crazy when it comes to like talking about things he's very fucking energetic and crazy especially when he's on stage he goes fucking nuts but if that sounds enticing to you I would recommend definitely a lot of the songs from this album and make up your own mind. Uh, Do Your Best is a really beautiful, somber song. I took my cardigan off because it's warm. But yeah, uh, Rights for Gays is a banger. Um, it's an interesting title, but you know, it's a really nice, really synth poppy kind of, I don't know what you call that, it's that synthy drum kind of thing. I don't know what kind of thing that is. Electrical drum, fucking, it sounds really good. Listen to that. Really nice um, bass as well. Silent Chorus is a song that fucking makes me cry, bruh. Silent Chorus is such a fucking banger as well. Like, Silent Chorus goes insane with how hard it is in terms of like how ethereal sounding it is. It really feels like you're ascending into fucking heaven. My Whole World's Coming Apart is a banger too. Pure Rockets is pretty good. It's really hard to read this because it's literally, there is text on that. But you can play it. Yeah, look. That's a really stupid thing. But yeah, John Mouse. John Mouse, Love Is Real, not my favourite John album, uh, We Must Become the Pitiless Sensors of Ourselves is better, but Love Is Real is a good album, listen to John Mouse if you like that kind of sound. I'm going to show you one that I'm actually not massively keen on, <laughs> this came out not that long, well it came out a couple of years ago, but you know I got this when it just came out, 2017, there you go is when this came out, this is Kraftwerk, um, with their album, their live album, 3D. Yeah, this is a live album, ladies and gentlemen. It's a really pretty bit of album art. You know, Kraftwerk have always got a lot of really nice art. If you don't know who Kraftwerk is, um, they're pretty much one of the fundamental electronic 
kind of yeah they're an electro electronic kind of music um pretty much pioneered the whole thing in the 70s their german band they pretty much kicked off the whole thing or at least one of the pioneers of the whole thing like the like mid 70s is when they started and their shit just blows nuts off bro it's fucking crazy Kraftwerk are probably one of my favorite bands ever um i've got another album in there i've got um autobahn in there as well as um grand prix is that what it's called no tour de france i've got tour de france in there uh, but all bands probably my favorite album of theirs i love all band the song um it's like 14 minutes long and it's a fucking banger it feels like a journey but yeah this is 3d this is their live album that they did a couple of years ago this isn't the full um album they did like a alp release which is like a hundred pounds this is only like two two vinyl discs on this one but yeah, this is 3d um, it's pretty much just live versions of a lot of their class. Pretty much, this is all the classics: Autobahn, Banger, Radioactivity, Banger, Trans Europe Express, Banger, Man Machine, Banger, Computer World, Banger. Pretty much all of these are bangers. Um, yeah, if you like electro, you probably actually know who Kraftwerk is. If you don't, I highly recommend that you listen to them. That's all the little dudes. Um, I actually got that on my door somewhere as well. But yeah, you can't see it because of the angle. But yeah, I saw them, I saw they perform the four little dudes with their little uh, electronic table type beats. Uh, it's really, really cool. Released by um, their label Kling Klang. Yeah, that's their own uh, label. But if you open the gatefold, this is probably the best part of this whole album, is the album art itself. Uh, there you go, you can see you've got um, the dudes themselves as our little robots from The Robots, the album. Uh, no, it's not what the album's called. I think the album's called Man Machine. I've not called Man Machine, but this is from the robots. I saw the little dudes. I think the guy here, that's Ralph. Ralph Hotter. What finger is this? <laughs> that's Ralph Hotter there, who is like the only original member of the band still standing. But yeah, like I say, I'm not actually a massive fan of this album. Uh, I just want to pull it out because I've just got different opinions on it. That's the sleeve. Pretty exciting stuff nothing crazy about the disc itself obviously it's a newer one so it's a nice heavy what are these 80 something grams i can't figure out grams but these are a nice heavier vinyl discs but yeah i'm not a massive fan of the live stuff i just like the way that they play a lot of them especially like radioactivity radioactivity is a really good song because it's got like a lot of actually subtle humor to it because of the lyrics like it's like a mix between actual radioactivity and like radio fm am activity but for some fucking reason they turned it into like an activist song like stop radio activity it does like fukushima on here it's basically saying like nuclear energy is bad and don't use it it's really fucking dumb um and i don't really like the political message that they've shoehorned into what was originally a really good song to be honest uh yeah just their live covers of these songs i just don't like some of the new renditions Radio I Trit TV really lets it down. 3D is just okay. It's the first Kraftwerk album I bought. And, you know, like I say, I bought it in 2017. I was looking for a Kraftwerk album, and this is one that I found. But yeah, 3D is just kind of mid. I'm not a massive fan of it. I just wanted to pull it out because I've got different opinions on this one. If you're a Kraftwerk fan, yeah, you know, you might like it. I don't know. If, this, if you're looking for your first album, don't get 3D. Oh my god. I'm just going to show you to compare. This is Autobahn. Uh, my favourite Kraftwerk album of all time. This is a re-release one. I don't remember when this one got released. Uh, 2009 reprint, apparently. Yeah, there's not a lot of songs on it. Like I said, the entire A-side is like dedicated to Autobahn. And then it's like, Com Cometan Melody. Cometan Melody and 1 and 2 are really, really good. Um, but it's only one disc. I'm just showing you this because it's got some really cool art. Uh, as you can see, isn't that just fucking glorious? Just some really beautiful art of like a wee Volkswagen on the Autobahn. There are the Kraftwerks themselves. There's Ralph Hutter. No, that's Ralph Hutter right there. Um, I don't think there's anything particularly miraculous, but the vinyl, no, there isn't. But yeah, nice sleeve. All these re releases of really nice stuff alongside them. And would you believe it? Autobahn, this version actually comes with a nice little book, a nice little fucking booklet. Um, and it's just art. It's just really cool little original art from the original release, I guess, with the lyrics for fan, for, via fan, 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 off the Autobahn. And it's literally just that. It's literally just the lyrics of Autobahn, because there's not a lot of lyrics in Autobahn. And some beautiful, just really nice art alongside it. Vorons liegt in Weitestal, the sun is shined, 
Midgleed Sister Al. I can't really say German very well, but all oh, bands, it's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful song, and it's really nice art alongside, little booklet, nice sleeve. It's just fucking great. It's just a vibe. It's just a really happy go lucky album. This is originally released in 1974. That's how that's how you fucking know how long these motherfuckers have been doing this shit for. Let's bounce back with um, one of my favourite artists at the moment, one of my favourite recent artists I've started listening to, I think back in 2019. This is his latest release, I think, as you released in the same year I started listening to him, 2019. Is it? Oh, 2020, this came out. There you go. Uh, this is Thundercat, ladies and gentlemen. As you can maybe there read there from the nice little whatever the fuck that's supposed to be. This is from his latest release, It Is What It Is, uh, by Brain Feeder Records. Uh, this is a fucking banger. This is produced by Flying Lotus and Thundercat. Um, Thundercat is a funky funk man. He's probably my favourite bass guitarist of all time at the moment. He's just fucking insane on that motherfucker. Um, and he's just the most funkiest funkadelic motherfucker of all time. Also, he's a freak for anime. And... He's just fucking rad. He's just fucking such a talented motherfucker. If you like Kendrick Lamar, you're probably familiar with his album To Pump a Butterfly. It's kind of considered to be like one of the greatest albums of all time. Um, Thundercat was one of the producers of the album and he plays bass behind... Um, what song is it? I can't fucking remember the track. He does bass um, on some of the songs on To Pimp a Butterfly as well as he produced it and To Pimp a Butterfly is an amazing album. Kendrick Lamar is one of my favourite rap artists of all time as well. I've got a few vinyls, they're not in here. Uh, I've got Good Kid Mad City and his release release. Um, the Big Steppers. I can't remember the full fucking name of the, name, the album. Mr. Morale and The Big Steppers. Anyway, I talk about Thundercat with It Is What It Is. If you like funk, if you like bass, um, if you like all that kind of shit, then and a little bit of humour as well. Thundercat is where it is and this album's fucking great. It's got a lot of tracks on it. Like I say, it's only one disc as well. Uh, and this vinyl is also really cool because it's a neon orange vinyl on a nice little black sleeve. And looky looky, just it's a fucking really beautiful fucking orange colour. It just looks fucking fire and it matches the aesthetic of the whole album very, very well. But yeah, Thundercat is just a funky motherfucker. Um, and he's incredibly talented. Dragon Ball Durag is one of the funniest and one of my favourite songs of all time. King of the Hill is a banger as well. Existential Dread, of course. As well as I Love Lewis Cole, Lost in Space, Interstellar Love. Funny thing, bruh, it's just... If you love funk, if you like bass, fucking listen to this album and listen to Thundercat. He's just up and coming. He actually just recently released a song with Tame Impala. And it fucking slaps. So, yeah. That's just a quick one I'm going to show off. Uh, Thundercat as well as... I also have Apocalypse which is by him, but I don't like Apocalypse as much as what is is probably my favourite album. I think his best album is maybe Drunk, but I don't have Drunk. It's got, um, what songs? Friend Zone is a really good song that's on that one as well as the one that everyone knows. Nobody move this blood on the floor. I can't remember the fucking name of it, but it's really, really good. I'll show you one more album that I own before I move on to. There's two little goodies here I'm going to show you. Um, yeah, I've got a fuck ton more albums, but you know, like a lot of them are through there and there's more in there, but I just want to give you a bit of variety. And this is a little bit more variety. This one's really fucking cool. I actually picked this up in Disney, Disney Springs in Florida, believe it or not. This is the soundtrack to the Nightmare, Tim Burton's, excuse me, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Ooh -wee. <laughs> Isn't this fucking fire? How fucking cool is this? Yeah, 20 dollars, 29 bucks and 98 cents. Actually pretty reasonable for what you expect to pay for one of these things. As you can see there, this is what's called a picture disc. It's just a vinyl record that has a picture on it. It's really, really cool. Um, and yeah, as you can expect, this is the soundtrack, the entire soundtrack for... Tim Burton's Night Before Christmas, one of my favourite um, films of all fucking time, I think. Uh, one of my favourite musicals of all time, I would call it a musical, I think. Um, one of my favourite Christmas films, one of my favourite Halloween films. It's just got the whole fucking package in here. I love the aesthetic. I think it's Tim Burton's finest. I know he didn't make the film or direct or anything, but um, his name's attached to it and his fucking reeks of Tim Burton. Like, look at it. It's just German expressionism and all that kind of stuff all up and down. Um, but yeah, it's two discs. It's all different pictures from the films. And it says, 
Featuring Sally song, this is Halloween and Kidnap the Sandy Claws. I don't know why it says featuring. You'd kind of expect that to be on there, considering it's part of the album, but I don't know. Or the soundtrack, even. I have a lot of film soundtracks, I should say. Uh, like, you just saw Friday the 14th. forgot a lot more, but they're on the other room. But yeah, here's one still from the film of Jack Skellington trying on his Sandy Claws outfit. Um, you got the mayor there. I think this is from Making Christmas, Making Christmas, it's so fine. I think there's that scene there. It's ours this time. Oh god, I fucking love this film so much. Um, here you've got Dr. Finkelstein, isn't that his name? Dr. Finkelstein putting his brain in his little wife, halving his brain. And then finally you've got Oogie's Boys, Lock, Shock and Barrel. Um, I remember when my sister couldn't spell and she was trying to look this up online in like 2008 and she wrote Lick, Shick and Biddle, which is hilarious to me. I don't know why I'm talking about that, but yeah, Oogie's boys, there they are. Really, really cool. Just stills in the film, all the all the songs, all the hit songs in the film. Obviously, this is the only annoying thing about these picture discs is they come in a just a fucking generic translucent plastic sleeve, so you can't actually see the soundtrack the track list anywhere, it's just the fucking discs, because, you know, if you're gonna have picture discs, they need to be in a fucking plastic sleeve to show you it. But yeah, it's really cool. I think this is probably Danny Elfman's finest, he wrote the lyrics and composed it and stuff, and yeah, this is probably his finest work of all time. I think every song in this film is a fucking banger. If you wanna know my favourite song, it's probably the Oogie Boogie Man, because that's just a fucking beat. Uh, but yeah, this is one of my favourite films of all time. An Air for Christmas. I saw this in Disney Springs of all fucking places when I was on holiday in Florida the last time I was there. Or one of the last times I was there. I was just fucking sitting there. Actually, it was not even on the shop floor, which really bugged me. And actually, like, you know, I had to go out my way to, like, try and get it. And they fucking sourced it for me, which is really, really cool. I think it was part of the Halloween collection that they kind of just started putting away because it went in November. Um... But yeah, I was really lucky that this is what I fucking find in a place like Disney Springs. Like, it's just such cool merch. It looks fucking cool. It's a great soundtrack. It's cool to have on vinyl. It's picture disc. It's just fucking great. And it's, you know, it just it sounds fucking brilliant. And it's got, like, the extended songs as well that you don't hear in the film. Like, there's an, the extended version of the Oogie Boogie Man and stuff. It's fucking, oh, banger. Okay, we're closing the chest. We've locked the chest, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and there's two more things I want to show that are not vinyl. I've got a CD and I've got a cassette. Just a little interesting tidbit to show you what I own here. So we'll start with the CD. Um, and this is really fucking cool. Um, my good friend, a good friend of mine that I've, been, I've known for years since like high school and stuff, his name's Michael. He bought me this. Um, I think he bought it because he broke my laptop by accident or something like that. I didn't really care that much. It was an old laptop. Um, but he was very kind and gorgeous and lovely enough to get me this to make up for it. This is a dark ambient soundtrack called Yog Sofoff. Yog fucking Sofoff. And it is done by a label called uh, Cryo Chamber. And Cryo Chamber are basically known for artists who do ambient music, specifically dark ambient music. And this is a CD album of dark ambient music inspired by the works of Howard Philip Lovecraft, who is the author who's known for Cthulhu, um, and just the entire Cthulhu mythos and the dream cycle and all that kind of stuff. It's one of my favourite authors of all time. Yes, controversy. Wow. Oh my god. Fucking hell. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I don't really care. This is all about one of his great old... Is this one of the great old ones? Well, it's about Yog sofoff or Yog sofoff however you want to pronounce it, who's like... He's like the daddy of them all. He's like time. Yog sofoff knows the gate. Yog sofoff is the gate. He's the big daddy. He's like the main antagonist of the Dumbwitch horror and stuff like that, which is one of his short stories. But yeah. This is just literally a soundtrack based on the works of H.P. Lovecraft, just based on, you know, just dark ambient music based on the concept of Yogg Sothoth and the Cthulhu Mythos and stuff, so it's like really dark, spooky, drippy, ominous horror kind of music. It's really great. I used to listen to this all the time when I was writing short stories, when I used to do that all the time. Yeah, when I used to like write short stories and stuff, this was like a banger, I used to just listen, because it just put you in the mood to write. Um, it's two discs, the first disc is like an hour long, and everyone's like 56 minutes long. But yeah, it's a really cool little album. I bet they've done more of the great old ones, of the Kafut, like just the deities in the Lovecraft world, that they've done, I'm gonna say this in an alternate way so don't get in trouble, Shub Nagura. 
I'm not going to say the other way. Shub Nagurath is one of them. But there's a red album. And I think they've done one for Narlyathotep now. If you don't know what I'm talking about, read. If you like short stories and horror, read Lovecraft. It's just classic stuff. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the album just looks really cool. As uh, two discs. I think the, the, the art of the discs and indeed the box are kind of meant to be inspired from... The Necronomicon, which is like not from De yeah, Evil Dead, this this is from Lovecraft. It's the big book of the insane book written by the mad Arab Abdul Al Hazred, and the Necronomicon contains basically everything about um, all the deities and Cthulhu and Yog Sothoth and Azathoth and all these fuckers. But yeah, not only does it come with two discs, it comes with some really nice art as well. It comes with a little art booklet, kind of like um, Autobahn, except it's in there. Yeah, so you can see it's kind of supposed to be like the Necronomicon, just with these crazy writings and sketches and stuff. Um, it's really, really cool, really neat. And there's actually writing taken directly from Lovecraft stories as well. Uh, like this is one from, you can't already read it because it's white text, but this is taken from the Dumbwich Horror about Yogg Sothoth, uh, which is really, really cool. And yeah, there's the man himself, probably one of the only pictures of H.P. Lovecraft that exists right at the end. A really, really cool little album. Um, and it's got all the artists on the back there and the career of the artwork and the master mixer of all that. There's all the names there, you're not going to be able to read that, but you know. If you're into dark ambient stuff, you like listening to stuff in the background when you're getting in the zone of some sort of thing, this is great. D&D &D music, you know, stuff like that, then I highly recommend you listen to Yogg Sothoth, grab yourself an album because it's fucking great it's a cryo chamber collaboration baby and finally this is one of the only cassettes i own i've only got this one and it's the cassette that came with the special the Cletters edition of doom eternal it's just literally a cassette tape it's pretty disappointing i thought it was going to be like this the soundtrack for doom eternal it's not it's literally just like 30 minutes of demons chanting and shit I'm not even kidding but yeah this is a really cool little this is like if if you're familiar with discogs which is um a website for collectors of albums and vinyl and stuff. This album is not on Discogs, which is very interesting. It's a little cassette called um, Commodified Amenities. Yes, Commodified Amenities is published by a label called Darknet and it's distributed by CLOV. It's a clothing brand called Vapor95. Vapor95 slap, they do really cool it's basically based on the vaporwave aesthetic and stuff they're pretty up and coming they've got a store in la or they did have a store in la i think they've moved but yeah vapor 95 are really fucking cool and now they've made a record label where they release compilation albums of vaporwave artists and synthwave artists and that kind of genre and this was the first album that they did and it's called commodified amenities it is on cassette as you can see it's just a really cool little thing the lines there we go that's way better it's just a cool album, I feel like is kind of a mix of different, like, like I say, Vaporwave, some sampled stuff in there. There's some trap and stuff. It's just a big compilation of different artists. And Commodified Amenities is actually a really good fucking album, I think. It's got some bangers on there. It's very underrated. They're kind of unknown artists and stuff too, so... Um, if you like Vaporwave, again, uh, go to Vapor95, check out their brands, their clothing, and check out their albums too. This is just one of them. This is the first one they came out with, Commodified Amenities. Can I, like, focus on that? There we go, it's kind of a bit better. Yeah, as you can see, the fucking cassette cart cartridge jewel case, it's a jewel case, sorry, is fucking broke. It broke on arrival. This thing took ages to get here. Um, and yeah, there's just a subtle crack uh, in the cover, which is a bit fucking lame. But, you know, I'm not too bothered about it. It's not a big deal. I do like the album cover, Scott. It's just, it just screams vaporwave, you know, the fucking shopping mall aesthetic, the marble statues, the grid, the laser grid thing. It's just very, it's just vaporwave all over the place. There's very, many different artists on it. There's nine tracks in total. Uh, Sean Mecca with Members Only, that's the rapper, one of the only rappers of like actual lyrics and stuff on this album. It's a really good song there. It's a me. It's a me. There you go. That's another one. Uh, Lunchtime, that's a banger too. Paranormal with Media. Stel Leo with Anime Score, these are all bangers. It's just a great little compilation album of Vaporwave artists and slept on artists people don't really know about. Check it out, Commodified Amenities on Vapor95. That's the little V right here. Oh shit, let me get it out one more thing. That's the little V there, you see it? On that side, the little V, that's our logo. Vapor95, great brand. I've got a shirt of theirs 
with a Mac tonight. You may have seen it in a few videos. And that is it. That will do. A couple of vinyl albums. I think a very nice broad smorgasbord of different artists. Artists and genres I listen to. There was a little bit of funk, a little bit of rap, a little bit of synth, a little bit of vaporwave, a little bit of electro, you know. A lot of different stuff in there. A little bit of dark ambient fucking music, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, we'll definitely do another one of these because I have a fuck ton more albums of different sounds. Uh, I can even further show you some more fucking genres I love. But yeah, that'll do it. That's some music that I own on vinyl and cassette and CD. Uh, Check out all the artists if you're interested. And that's going to do it for this installment of collection, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you all very much for watching. Let me know what your favourite artists are. Do you like any of these artists? What are your opinions? Do you have a favourite? What are your favourite? What are your favourite artists? Leave in the comments below. I read everything. Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in to the collection, ladies and gentlemen. More content to come. I'm still working on stuff. University's finished for the holidays right now, so hopefully more bigger projects to come soon. I'll finish them, hopefully. Uh, I have been Coleman. And all that stupid shit. Whatever. Bye-bye. Fucking hell.